In this video, we review the different cloud service types in Azure. Hello everyone, my name is Travis and this is my Azure Learning Channel, Seraltos. In this video, we go over the skills measured in the AZ900 Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Exam. This video covers the topics Describe Cloud Service Types located in the Describe Cloud Concepts section. Before we get started, please like, subscribe to this channel, and give me a shout out on social media. Your support is appreciated. Keep an eye on the playlist for updates and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. Also, check out my courses on udemy.com. The links are below. The slides used in this video are available at my website. The link for that is also below. Let's move on to the different types of cloud services. And to do this, let's start with an analogy. And I should warn you, this analogy may contain gluten. Let's say we want bread, maybe a baguette or a nice loaf of sourdough. Let's look at the options. We could buy the ingredients and make it ourselves, mixing the flour, water, yeast, and assorted seeds or fruit or whatever you like in your bread. Take the time to mix, let it proof and bake to exactly how we like it. This option involves the most amount of effort, but you have complete control over the end product. As another option, we could buy a loaf that's all ready to eat. This option may be limited, but most bakeries have some pretty good options. We can bring it home, slice it up, and share it with friends and family. There's still effort in selecting, purchasing, and preparing the bread, but not as much effort as making it ourselves. The third option is go to a restaurant that serves bread. My analogy may be getting weak here, but stick with me. We can go out with our friends and family. There may not be as many options as making it ourselves or buying a loaf, but we can still simply enjoy consuming the bread. At the end, each person pays for what they eat. What does this have to do with cloud computing? Well, let me explain it. There are three categories to define the types of cloud services. The first is infrastructure as a service or IaaS, as it's commonly referred to. IaaS is the most basic type of cloud service. With IaaS, we rent virtual infrastructure such as computers, storage, and networking, and build our own services. This is similar to baking our own bread. We can get exactly what we want, but we have to do it ourselves. This is the most common entry point for learning and moving to cloud services because it's comparable to what most people are familiar with on-premises. IaaS is built on consumption or based on what we use. The next type of cloud service is Platform as a Service or PaaS. These are pre-created, on-demand environments for deployment, testing, and delivering web and mobile applications, as well as other services. If we need to create a web service, we don't have to go through the process of configuring a virtual network creating virtual servers and deploying web server software. Just like buying the loaf of bread instead of making it, we can buy pre-configured web platforms. That way, the team can focus on developing applications instead of managing infrastructure. Platform as a service is also built based on resources used. The third option is software as a service or SaaS. This is a way to deliver applications over the internet. A product like Microsoft Dynamics, for example, a customer relations management application. We don't have to build the application or host it, we just consume it, kind of like bread at a restaurant. One distinction with SaaS is that it's billed based on a subscription, typically licensed per user. Just like a restaurant where each person pays for what they order. This is different from the other solutions that bill by the resources used. That's it with the food analogies, I'm getting hungry. There's one more subcategory under PaaS that we should address called serverless computing. Serverless computing has all the advantages of PaaS services and enables developers to create applications faster without the need to deploy and manage infrastructure. The cloud service provider provisions and manages the infrastructure required to host the application and its code. The development team can focus on tasks that add value to the organization, such as creating and managing the application. The benefits of serverless computing include no infrastructure to manage, automatic scaling during times of high demand, faster time to market by reducing dependencies on physical hardware, and more efficient use of resources by only paying for cloud services used. Let's take a look at use cases for each cloud service type. We'll start with IaaS. One use case for IaaS is lift and shift, or moving on-premises resources directly to the cloud. This may seem like a tempting solution, but it can be expensive if not managed correctly. For example, we may over-provision RAM and CPU on-premises because those resources are shared on hardware we own. 
With cloud computing, we pay for the virtual hardware based on RAM and CPU allocated. The cloud servers need to be right-sized to avoid costly misconfigurations. We can use IaaS for test and dev environments, shutting down resources when not in use to save money. It's a good location for off-site storage, including backups, and IaaS is also a good option if an organization needs to utilize high-performance computing but doesn't want the expense of purchasing and maintaining it on-premises. PaaS is a good option to use as a development and production framework for a variety of services. There are PaaS platforms purpose-built to develop and run web-based applications. There are also analytics and business intelligence services, as well as automation services available as PaaS offering. As a comparison, we could deploy a bunch of IaaS servers to run a web application, but it may be easier and cheaper to use a web PaaS service instead. Finally, SaaS includes those readily available services such as email, collaboration software such as Teams, customer relationship management, enterprise management, and document management platforms. These are all ready-to-use applications typically build per user. With each type of service, the management responsibility shifts from the customer to the cloud provider. While IaaS services require installing the OS, applications, and configuring the network, PaaS services take on responsibilities for some of those tasks, such as managing the underlying OS, patching, and application updates. SaaS takes care of the application management, backups, and high availability. As a customer, we only have to manage access and whatever configuration items are available to us. Now that we understand the different categories of cloud services, IaaS, PaaS, SaaS, and serverless, let's finish the video with the shared responsibility model. Let's start with a short summary of a conversation I had early in my cloud computing career. We were exploring the option to put a server in Azure. I brought up that we need to come up with a backup and patching solution for the server. The response was, we don't have to, it's in the cloud. That response was not correct, and that brings us to the shared responsibility model. It's important to understand what responsibilities are the customers, and what are the cloud providers, and what responsibilities are shared between the two. Because, as my conversation illustrated, the assumptions that backups and patching were handled by Azure was not right and could lead to loss of data or servers becoming compromised. The shared responsibility model defines the division of responsibilities for a given type of cloud service. As outlined previously, the types of cloud services include SaaS, PaaS, and IaaS. For comparison, we'll add on-premises or private cloud into the mix. For all cloud types, the information and data, computers used to access the service, and accounts and identities are the customer's responsibility. The data we add to the platform, for example, the content added to SharePoint, is the customer's responsibility. Also, managing the accounts or users who get access to the system is the responsibility of the customer. The responsibility varies for identity and directory infrastructure, applications, network control, and operating system. These items are the customer responsibility for both IaaS and on-prem, backups, patching, network configuration, and applications systems run on, and user identities, such as those managed by Windows AD, are all the customer's responsibility. With PaaS, it depends on the PaaS service used. The underlying operating system is Microsoft's responsibility, but the rest of the stack falls someplace between. This is because of the flexibility available with PaaS services. For example, many services require a public IP address to be accessible from the internet. Microsoft can allocate an IP address they own for the application, so we don't have to register for our own block of public IP addresses. But how that traffic is routed from that IP to the customer's application is the customer's responsibility. For SaaS, the identity management is shared, but the rest is up to Microsoft. Azure AD is the identity management platform used for Microsoft's SaaS applications. Microsoft manages the Azure AD platform, but managing the identities on the platform is the responsibility of the customer. Responsibility for the physical infrastructure is Microsoft's, with the exception of on-prem, of course. This includes managing redundancy and capacity. Understanding the types of cloud services, IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS, along with the responsibilities for each, is critical to successfully managing Azure cloud services. That's it for this video on the types of cloud services, including the shared responsibility model. Please subscribe and check out the AZ900 playlist for more videos. Thanks for watching.